Hello everyone, I'm Papi Orion. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm really happy that you are here and today we can have an amazing talk. Before we dive into things, we'd like to remind you to hit the subscribe button, also hit the bell button because that would notify you when never post a video. <music> African living abroad, it doesn't matter where, in Europe, Germany, um, England, France, you know, uh, Russia, Ukraine, whatever country you're living in, you've been asked a lot of different questions, sometimes stupid questions, and how do you react to those questions, and you know, do you educate these people that ask you this question, do you tell them exactly what the truth is? So I know we all as African have had these experiences. Is, and you don't have and sometimes we even get asked these questions in right there in Africa but people that come to visit our continent ask us stupid questions that's why I'm bringing this issue out to you guys and ask you what do you think have you experienced something like this has you been have you been asked a question like this um, what was your reaction leave a comment in the comment section below and let's start a conversation together. So guys, the first question that I, will, I was asked and that I thought was a, a bit of an ignorant question was how did you get here? <laughs> how did you get here? Now all the people think when they see you as an African, obviously that as a black person, they think that you are here in Europe as, as a refugee and they think that you got here, you came here by boat or whatever it took you um, <laughs> or whatever way you got here you threw your passport or something like that and i get asked these questions and i'm like no i guess i flew here um i came here by flight and they get surprised oh, actually i came here to study um first came to switzerland to study and therefore, if you come in to study, you need to get a visa. And so people get um, get surprised when they hear that. I don't know how, why they do that. If um, just being black, that, that equals to being a refugee or to having a come, uh, having come here by boat or whatever it is, I'm not sure. But this is a perception people get here now that uh, there, there are quite a lot of refugees here in Europe, so many people think that we, all Africans, all black people are refugees. And second question is, uh, do you speak African? And this is quite surprising because people should know that uh, Africa has got a lot of different countries, um, if I'm not mistaken, 54 con different countries in Africa. And being from Congo, Congo, we have got 84 million people and we have a lot of different tribes and therefore we have 400 different languages. I speak a little bit of Lingala, I'm from the eastern part of Congo, therefore I speak a lot of Swahili and my mother tongue which is Mashi. So um, I don't think I'll be able to speak, there is a specific language in Africa, Africa is very diverse. We um, have a lot of different languages and no matter of fact 54 countries that <laughs> would be surprising if we all speak the same language and this what makes this is what makes us unique because of the diversity that we have in Africa the different language languages that we speak the different foods the different cultures and I just love traveling Africa and experiencing the cultures the languages that makes me happy so I'm um, for those who think Africa is just one country and uh, we all speak African, no, we have a lot of different languages. I don't even know. Over one billion people in the continent of Africa, a lot of every country have a lot of different languages. Third question, um, and this is really, really funny also. It also related to almost like, do you speak African? Because one day, I uh, was in a specific country and then I, 
uh, when they asked me where I was from and I told them I was from Africa and this person yeah um, said yeah I actually have a friend in Angola do you know this person I was like what <laughs> Angola I've never even been there I don't speak the language they speak Portuguese in Angola in my country Congo we speak French, we speak a lot of other languages, so how will I actually know how many kilometers is actually there between uh, Eastern Congo and Angola? Um, it's, it's crazy when people think that you will know as an African, you know everyone on a continent. It's crazy. One billion people, you should be a wizard to know someone who's, who's from Angola or even from Nigeria unless you have studied together. So this question People ask you that, okay, I've been to Africa, uh, you from Africa, do you actually know this place in uh, Malawi or in Morocco? And it, it just puzzles me that people think like that. But these are the questions that people ask, ask us sometimes. Yeah, one, one funny question actually was... Um, this friend of mine uh, from America who uh, I met in South Africa and when she told her sister that okay I have um, an African friend and then um, she responded she asked him a question does he come from uh, the, the place where they don't they wear uh, uh, like they don't wear clothes does he is does he know how to climb trees or does he live close does he live with lions and stuff like that? And I'm like, man, even where I grew up, I, I, I never saw a lion. You know, we were, of course, I come from close to a forest in Congo, but I, lions don't just go around houses or we don't build houses where we, where lions, where lions are. We <laughs> also have people and we, we have civilization actually. And um, yeah, so uh, to answer that question, I just said no. We don't live with lions. We don't live with lions. We live just like normal people in normal house. We go to school. We you know eat normal food. So for those who think that we all live in a jungle and we use machetes and to we, all these things perception that people have about Africans um, yeah it's, it's crazy I think people need to travel to Africa and be able to you know see how people live in Africa people don't don't think that we still living in a jungle uh, or, although there's still people that live in a forest nom, nom, nomad people and stuff like that the other question that I wanted to share with you guys and maybe the last one is where I guess get asked always that if I do smoke weed <laughs> and I think that is not too much related to being an African or maybe because of the perception that people have um, about African uh, black people they get that more from Afro um, from black Americans with music videos and Jamaican, but I also have, I think that has to do with my dreadlocks because when they see me, they just uh, think automatically that I smoke weed. And when I say no, they get, I see their faces, they get surprised that, what? You do not, you do not smoke weed? <laughs> no, I do not smoke weed. I just have dreadlocks because, you know, um, I like the way they look and I've had dreadlocks now for eight years. And I didn't do it because uh, I'm, I am a hardcore Rastafari, but also because um, I just like and the best hairstyle that I like. Don't have to go to the barber shop to to get haircuts, and I can just do. I uh, can just take good care of my hair, and yeah, that <laughs> just makes me happy. Not because of weed. Or because I'm a Rastafarian. I remember an encounter that I had here in Germany where I was with a friend of mine who's from Nigeria and we parked a car somewhere and after a few minutes we noticed that the police was following us and uh, at some point um, it 
when we got to a certain point, the train station, uh, the police surrounded us and asked us for where, where was the drive, where we had in the drives. But I mean, we didn't have the drive. We didn't have the drive. We've never uh, seen the drives. We never saw the drives. We just innocent people. But I mean, that shows that shows you why people think about about um, Africa, Af Africans, or about people with dreadlocks. And yeah, actually, that also taught me a lesson to be more careful <laughs> when I'm going to places because of what people are thinking of, um, of me. And yeah, getting the police just stopping me because I had dreadlocks that I must be having drugs. It's, it's, it's quite crazy and I think police should be more educated in these countries and to know that dreadlocks doesn't equal uh, marijuana or weed so um, that was my experience and I know it's my personal experience a lot of you have a lot of different experience please if you want to share with us re remember to leave a comment in the comment section below about your experience around in the um, places where you visited and I know we all all as African we have stories some of them positive stories some of them negative stories leave a comment positive or negative we can start a conversation together and also the the thing is how do we react to these um, experiences that we have do we educate these people about who we are and a, a picture which kind of picture we, that we leave behind so guys i want to hear from you guys and um remember to subscribe to this channel and together again we will tell positive stories of africa uh, positive stories of africans we are much more than the stereotypes that people put on us and i know that um, as we we travel the world we continue traveling the world we show positive uh, images of, of of who we are around the world so um, remember to subscribe to this channel and i love you guys and thank you for your love and we'll be seeing you next week with another video mm -hmm.